So after the NBA Finals, I told y'all I might be taking a little bit of time off after a season going hard pretty much every day. But after spending the weekend with this new West Side Boogie album, I just was inspired, felt it in my heart to make a video talking about this. And normally I'm not big into album reviews. I love my music, but I'm not necessarily as articulate when it comes to talking about music. But West Side Boogie, one of my favorites. Gotta talk about this new album. Following up his last album, Everything's For Sale, which is... Definitely one of my top three favorite albums ever, and this one definitely did disappoint. Going into it, the first thing I'm noticing is he's clearly about the music, man. He's not trying to shoot for anything because this man signed to Eminem, had some big names on his last one, you know, Six Lack Black, Eminem was featured on it. He could have got some a bunch of big names again, but if you look at most of the feature list, it's like some people that have like a thousand followers on Instagram, a couple thousand, like... I'm not a casual hip-hop fan by any means, but like even me, most of the names on there, I didn't know who they were. So respect for West Side Boogie, not just trying to get some big names, go for some big numbers on the project, and just get some great music. Because even these people that don't have much of a following yet, they were they sounded great on the project. And even the album title, No Blacks or More Black Superheroes. It's not like he's clearly not trying to pander to a big audience. Being signed to Eminem, I'm sure he has quite a bit of white fans like me, like the majority of hip hop fans are white. And so, like, he's not trying to pander to anything. He's just trying to make his music, which I respect because right now he might be a little bit slept on, but he's feeding that core fan base of people like me that just love the great music. And over time, it's, he's just going to be seen as a classic hip-hop artist, I believe. I think he's making that type of music, that level of music, that even if he's not getting the love now, 50 years from now, people are going to be looking back at classic hip-hop. I think people are going to be getting these albums from West Side Boogie. Like, you know, a lot of kids, people like my age, younger, getting into, like, old classic hip-hops. They have their own vinyls. It's a thing or whatever. And they're not buying, like, the big hits from back in the day. They want, like, the classic rock albums. And I think West Side Boogie is delivering that back-to-back. And this one, different from the last one where this album, Everything's For Sale, his first real uh, debut album, it's it's pretty much if you're into that like slow, chill, like, kind of emotional type of music, it's pretty much that for the most part than the two songs. I love it, but like it's you have to be in the right mood for it or you want that type of music. This one is beautiful because it, it still has that, but the concept of this album is more black superheroes. He's talking about how basically he feels like he needs to put on a different character, different personality, whether he's in the hood, whether he's in his relationship, whether he's with his kids. And so there's a lot of like beat switches, voice changes to where he's doing each like character, superhero, whatever you want to call it. You know, he has the Ratchet Bug character, whatever. He has a song on there called Ratchet Bug, which is pretty solid. Uh, the Super Blood character where he's, you know, you, you can hear on the project, like, on Stuck in the second verse, and then it's just Anthony, his regular name, where it's more, it's more of the songs that are similar to his last album, like the slow, relaxed ones. But on the last one, the last album, you have to be ready for just, you know, like a chill experience like that. And then this one, as soon as maybe it starts to feel a little too slow, if, you, if, that, if that is a thing for you, you get a beat switch, and he comes completely different. Like, LOL SMH2, the first one on the last album, is pretty much a chill song most way, most of the way. There's beat switch as well. But this one, like, it's very chill in the first half. And then the beat switches, and he comes hard again. Anthony, the last track, same thing. Like, chill, chill for the first half, talking about himself, emotions, whatever. And then the second half, he's coming different. So this, the beat's changing constantly, the tempos are changing, and you get basically any type of music that you want from West Side Boogie within this album. My favorite song probably so far might be Windows Down with Snoop Dogg. Perfect person to get on the feature. Just a nice, chill, beautiful song. If to smoke too, if you're into that, or whatever, even if you're not, just a beautiful song. And I also love LOSMH2, like I said. It's got the beautiful start at the beginning, and then it switches up, and it, the beat comes hard. I love that. Love how he did that on Anthony War too. I mean, Anthony War as well. You know, the last song on the album. Most of this album I like a lot. Those would probably say are my top three right now. The only song I'm not super into so far is the one with Soldier Boy. I still kind of like it. And actually, I think when I looked at like his numbers on YouTube, it might be the most like liked album on this, liked song on this album. Just for me, so far, I'm not feeling it as much as the others. But overall, pretty much every song on this album is hitting for me. And one way I could say West Side Boogie probably stepped it up on the last album, which is obviously one of my favorites ever, is the lyricism and the wordplay. He always had that, 
But last album especially was just very focused on saying what he wants to say. A little bit less of that stuff. I've heard him talk about in an interview how like Eminem fans are expecting him to be super lyrical, the ones that like check him out from him being signed to Shady. But he's more so about telling his story. But I think he did a great job on this album of inserting like the witty lyricism into like the part of the story, part of the song, and it doesn't take away from it. Which is what I love in hip hop music. That's why Wale is like my favorite rapper ever because I think he does a great job of putting great wordplay into songs where it doesn't just take away from it. He's still telling the story. And like some examples from this album would be like on Windows Down with Snoop Dogg where he's talking about been hiding all my dents from this bitch I've been crashing with. Got a lot of baggage. Should I take it on this acid trip? Who knew my inside had glass in it? I never noticed till you shattered it. Like, that type of stuff, he did a great... There was a lot of nice wordplay on this album. A lot of good lyricism. So I think he stepped it up even another notch with that type of stuff. Even just as a strictly rapping-wise, I think he probably did even a better job on this album. Last album was just beautiful songs all throughout. This one is the same thing, but maybe just a, comes a little bit hard, harder in terms of his rapping and his lyricism. I only really have a couple criticisms for the album. The first one being only 12 songs after more than three years, like basically four years since his last album. I would have liked a couple more tracks, especially ones that are more like stuck where it's, you know, really upbeat and he's you know, talking about his past, whatever. You know, like it's definitely not like the last album where it's all slower more for the most part. It's definitely a good balance, but I would like even maybe a couple more that are similar to stuck or just a couple more songs in general. And the second, I guess, criticism is just that like I said, just having more than three years in between albums. I would just like more music from West Side Boogie because just for me personally, maybe for the majority of people just care about having the best quantity, but I mean, best quality over quantity. But for me, Wale and Kendrick Lamar were like always my two favorite rappers. And then for me, Wale passed Kendrick just based off the consistency. I love something that's going to be delivering and not taking huge breaks. And for West Side Boogie, I'm not trying to say if he's watching this to like that he needs to you know force an album out every year or anything like that. I just think that he's the type of artist that he has the capabilities, even if he doesn't feel like he has an album ready yet, that he could deliver some good tunes, like a few songs, an EP or something like that, in between an album, because it was basically like three plus years of basically like one or two songs between albums. And I was hope that between this album and the next one, could get at least a few songs in between a little bit more, because I just want to hear more from that man, because he's my top three rappers ever, at least top four, when you got talk about Wale, Kendrick, West Side Boogie and Big Crit. And like I said, reviews aren't really my thing, so I'm gonna wrap it up. But I just wanna do this for y'all, my subscribers that maybe are interested because I'm a big fan of West Side Boogie and I don't think he gets the attention he deserves. And West Side Boogie, if you're watching by any chance, I appreciate you dropping this body of work. Greatly appreciated. You're dropping classics on classics right now. Y'all should check them out. If you're a fan of any type of hip hop, whether it's like a J. Cole style, Wale, Kendrick, any of that type of stuff, you're gonna love it. This man's elite. Elite with the wordplay, song concepts, album concepts, structure of everything. He put it together beautifully. Well done, Westside Boogie. Great job.